Hi everyone, Dr. Nubitech here. I want to talk about low blood pressure to the brain. So when people get injuries to the brain, oh, and I'm not, I'm not talking about ones where you bleed, I'm talking about like a concussion is you snap some neurons, you don't bleed in the brain, you got a normal MRI, but you damage neurons, okay? When you get that kind of injury, um, two basic mechanical problems happen. One is your intestinal tract, if you think of it like a conveyor belt, the intestinal conveyor belt slows down. So people can have, like, if the stomach does, well, up here they'll get choking on food because it's not passing down. And it could be in the esophagus or even up high, we call it globus. The stomach isn't emptying, so you can be nauseated, have heartburn, maybe reflux. The small intestine doesn't move well, so you got irritable bowel syndrome and cramping and everything. And then people commonly get constipation after a brain injury, all right? Now, if everything works fine, all that should go away. But the problem is, if you have chronic inflammation from SIBO and other things, you just can't fully recover and you're left with these symptoms. So one, th okay, so one thing mechanically is slow motility of the intestinal conveyor belt. The other thing is low blood pressure to your head. Super common, okay? This is attention deficit disorder or brain fog or um, a minor cognitive impairment if you're 70. It's low blood pressure. It's not pre-Alzheimer's really. Uh, this is pretty much the cause for all headaches it's looking like other than sinus headaches. So if you have migraine headaches, tension headaches, cluster headaches, low blood pressure to the scalp muscles. It's chronic neck pain that occurs predominantly when you're upright. Uh, that's called coat hanger pain. It's more than likely TMJ in most of the patients. I've seen that just vanish when we fix the blood pressure regulation in people. It can cause shortness of breath. It can cause abdominal pain at times. Um, it makes people agitated, makes people anxious, makes people fidgety. It's foot tapping, makes people crave nicotine. All of that is from low blood pressure in the head. And so, now, I've been a clinician for almost 40 years. It's easy for me to talk to somebody and sort it out. I understand for, you know, just the general public, like trying to sort out what they're feeling. And is this So a simple test, well, there's two kind of tests, but one thing is do your symptoms get better when you lay flat. You get rid of gravity, you get blood pressure. If you're like, yeah, you know, those headaches, if I lay down for 20 minutes, it's like they almost go away, okay? Very few things in medicine are gonna get better when you lay flat, all right? And that's generally the things that improve because you have better blood pressure into your head. The other way you can do it is with the old chicken stock or chicken soup test, okay? I posted this, I don't know, 10, 15 years ago, long time ago, and getting salt in your bloodstream boosts blood pressure to your head, all right? People come in dehydrated to the hospital, the emergency room, we give them salt water by IV, okay? But if you want to have a test for like, say you're at work, you can't go lay down for 20 minutes, you get fired maybe. So what you do is you want chicken stock, you don't want the low sodium kind. Sodium is salt, okay? You want regular chicken stock or regular, uh, just like Campbell's chicken soup, even put extra salt in there and sip on that, drink that in a coffee cup, have it on your desk. So especially in the afternoon when you're flagging a little bit, you're like getting a headache, ah, my neck's killing me and stuff, start drinking some of that chicken uh, soup or chicken stock with the salt in it, even put the extra salt in there, that'll boost your blood pressure. And tons of people say, you know, I did that test and like, oh my gosh, it was so different. I felt so much better. If that makes you feel better, you got low blood pressure to your head, okay? Now, you need to see your regular doctor to make sure you aren't severely anemic. You know, if your red cell count's really low, that could do it. If you have heart failure, that could do it. If you're over-treated with blood pressure medicines, that can do it. So there's some other things that could do this other than brain injury. But if you've gone to the doc for all these symptoms and they've run labs and everything and they can't find anything, uh, you've got damage to your autonomic nervous system. And that's what the protocol is designed for. High dose DHA, olive oil, balancing the gut with rifaximin and some vagal nerve stimulation every day. And typically patients are a lot better in, in four to six months. So 
Hope that helps kind of sort some of that out for you. Y'all take care now. Bye.